if I wanted to go full time, I could do it in a heartbeat. Literally, just with a couple of Facebook marketplace ads, I could literally be milling five, six, seven days a week if I wanted to. Uh, hey, my name's Rick uh, from Rustic Harbors. Um, I have a Woodland Mills HM130 Max, and I pretty much saw mill for other people, cutting slabs, a little bit of dimensional lumber. And then I also do a lot of projects with that wood too. Yeah, so I kind of started with, kind of like a lot of people, I got the Alaskan sawmill to start, pushed through a lot of wood, really kind of broke my back trying to get through it that way. Thousands of board feet, kept watching these guys on YouTube, online with these portable sawmills. Oh, I gotta get one of these things. Did a lot of homework, did a lot of research, found Woodland Mills, and absolutely loved what they offered. Loved that they offer also offered the trailer, so I kind of jumped on that, did the bullet, got my HM130 Max, and I've been sawing ever since. Yeah, definitely started for my own projects. Um, I had the chainsaw, I had a couple of trees. I kind of live in a, right off the Cape, so I have a lot of pines, a lot of tall pines that sway a lot in the wind. So a couple of them came down, and instead of paying to get rid of them, or instead of chopping it up, I kind of just got an Alaskan mill and started slabbing it up. I got into woodworking, so I was doing a lot of different projects. So instead of going out and buying a lot of two by fours, I kind of just started making my own. A couple of jobs with the Alaskan mill for other people, but it's so hard and it's so time consuming. But then when I got my uh, Woodland Mills, the HM130 on the trailer and I could go to other people's houses, just tow it right on the back of my truck and just go to their house. I kind of, I just put up a ad on Facebook Marketplace and was literally swamped with people reaching out for me to come to their house and cut for them. So yeah, I, I'm definitely a part-time senior. Um, I'm a full-time firefighter, so I work two days, two 24-hour days a week. So I do have a lot of time <laughs> um, to myself, which is kind of why I got into woodworking, uh, keep myself busy. I was just always interested in it. Um, my grandfather used to make chairs, so kind of have always been into it. Try to get out a couple days a week. If I wanted to go full time, I could do it in a heartbeat. Literally, just with a couple of Facebook marketplace ads, I could literally be milling five, six, seven days a week if I wanted to. There's that many people who are interested in it. I don't know if that's all areas or because I'm in New England and we have a lot of trees, a lot of hardwood around here. I could definitely take this full time if I wanted to. Oh, it's been great. <laughs> the mill's paid itself off a hundred times over at this point. And then, yeah, I get all the. All this behind me is black walnut, where what what would this cost to buy at a slab or a lumber yard? It would be $100,000 worth? I don't even know. So now I have all of this for my projects. I do sell slabs too. But yeah, it's been going really well. Um, and it's literally for being part-time or like my side job, it keeps me as busy as I want to be. If I need a couple days off, I can take them. If I want to keep going straight, the jobs are always there. People are always reaching out. Uh, trees are always coming down. People don't want to pay tree companies to get rid of them. A lot of times they're sentimental about these trees that have been in their backyards for generations, basically. So they love me coming out to mill it up into usable wood. Yeah, I've definitely had a couple of people reach out say like, how do I get started? What do did, what did you charge? How much do you make? How, like, kind of questions like that. Um, and I love answering, helping them out, and as truthful as possible, because it is great. It's really rewarding, it's fun, it's productive, like you feel good about what you're doing. It's recycling these trees that would basically otherwise become mulch or firewood, basically. So you are recycling a lot of these things into these projects that a lot of these woodworkers are gonna turn into tables or chairs or cutting boards or whatever they're gonna do with it. But they're gonna make them last for generations. So these trees get to live on for a long time afterwards. There's so many people reaching out, especially this time of year, fall time, like trees are coming down. If I wanted to, I could hire another guy or two and take this seven days a week and still 
be completely slammed with jobs coming in. Obviously, every job's kind of different. Um, I'll have already worked out uh, with the customer, the date, the time, the price, all of that. I like to have the mill all ready to go in the morning so that I just hook it up and drive. It's already, I got a fresh blade on there. Everything's ready to go. Drive to wherever the site is. Setup is super easy. You pull up, we ha you have the leveling feet, you level it off and you roll the, you take out the ramps, put, take out the winch and you roll the logs up and you just go, start slabbing it up. I like to have the customer there. Obviously, um, a lot of times they are very helpful with input of how thick they want it. If they want the first one, four quarters, and they want the second couple, four quarter, eight quarters, they could change it up on the fly. It's also good to show them if there, if it's a yard tree, if there's metal in there, how often you hit the metal. So that when you're changing out the blades, they kind of understand why. Can't tell you how many, yeah. It, all these people, like, you just hear, oh no, I know there's no metal. This tree came from my backyard. And you're like, it might not be from you. This tree is probably 150 years old. Somebody back in the day might have had something in there. Um, so even if you don't think there's metal, if it's a yard tree, a lot of times there is. It's not the end of the world most times, if you kind of know what you're looking for. Uh, if you get the black staining around where it's coming, you can kind of tell that it's coming. But yeah, the toughest part would be moving the logs, obviously. I'm a one guy operation. I don't have any machinery, so I'm rolling them all by hand. As long as it's under 30 inches and under 10 feet long, there's, I still haven't not been able to get a log up on the mill. And then I basically just cut for as long as I can, as long as it's daylight. If it's a one day job, I'll pack up the mill and I'll head home. I have had and have a couple more multi day jobs where people are clearing lands and I'll be able to set up the mill. If it's in a safe location, I'll be able to leave, set it up and leave it overnight. Most of the time they get the lumber. I have had a couple of split jobs where nice, black walnuts, pearly maples, some things that I might really be interested in. So there are jobs where I'll give a discounted rate and do like a split job. But a lot of times it's customer's tree, customer's wood. They want everything that I'm cutting there. And I'm very happy to cut it up for them. But you can see I have a nice, I have a couple of rows behind this, a couple of rows in front of me. Um, I do have a healthy amount of my own here that I've gotten from jobs. Another big chunk of my business, I do have I do have a couple of connections at tree companies. Instead of them paying to get rid of their logs, they'll throw them to me for free. So I'll get them, mill them up, and then I'll sell the slabs. I'll show up and they'll throw a couple logs on it for me because they are usually paying per log or per tonnage to get rid of them. So they would rather get rid of it for free. And now I have a supply of wood coming in. The more you do this, the longer you're doing it, the more connections you're making, the more trees people are offering you, the more people hear about you have a portable mill, the more people they tell that now want you to come and mill for them. It's yeah, a big chunk of it's uh, word, word of mouth. So networking is a very important part of this. Just the more you, like even building with the wood, tables, projects, small projects, cutting boards, chess boards, all those kind of little things. The more you do, the more people see them in other people's houses, that, Hey, who made that? And they, oh, Rick at Rustic Harbors. Then they look at me and they follow my page and they ask for something for themselves. So like a lot of, a lot of connections are really helpful in this job. Facebook is the big one in terms of people finding me and asking me for milling jobs and for individual slab sales. A lot of times I'll put a slab of the week kind of thing up and those go really quickly. Marketplace is incredible for that. I don't know what I would have done without that. Instagram's really good. It's definitely a, basically a huge digital portfolio where I kind of just showcase all these logs. And, hey, like you have a log down. You don't really know like what you have sitting there, but then you kind of see me roll up with the mill, slice it into a couple four quarter boards, and then later turn those that slab into a table. A lot of times it like sparks people's creativity. I kind of, I started my Instagram page a long time ago. 
Um, I was doing a lot of like cornhole boards, stuff like that. So I had a little bit of a following, but yeah, then once I got the mill, that's when it really blew up just because people are so interested in seeing what's in these trees that are around them all day, every day. So yeah, once I got the mill and I did a little bit of cutting just for myself, kind of just to get used to it, to see what it was like. But yeah, once I put that ad out, people, every ad I put out, there's dozens of people reaching out. Um, and I kind of have to like schedule it back. Some people, if I can't make it that day, they're not interested kind of thing. But other than that, people are really willing to work and schedule with you. So if I wanted to fill up my whole summer right now, <laughs> I have an inbox full of messages right now that I should be getting back to. Um, and I'm sorry if I haven't, if you're watching this, but <laughs> I will. Um, I also got the blade sharpener and the tooth setter from Woodland Mills. And it's been incredible because now you hit a little nail, you take the blade off, you uh, set the teeth, you resharpen it, it's good as new. So yeah, if you're doing this significantly part-time or definitely full-time, definitely invest in those, the tooth setter and the blade sharpener. Yeah, without the mill, I definitely wouldn't be doing this with the chainsaw mill. Uh, yeah, I would have <laughs> been absolutely out of the game, sore back, no knees, like, it would have absolutely taken everything out of me i was still trying to push that uh chainsaw through so yeah i definitely wouldn't be milling without my woodland mills sawmill it is the business it's the lifeblood of the business all of my woodworking would be completely different like, i wouldn't have this supply of this endless supply of live edge wood i'd be paying to get it so my prices would be higher i don't know where i would be right now because that's such an investment if you want black walnut live edge table you can do an epoxy table now you're gonna spend two three four thousand dollars just for the wood you have to build that into your prices that's a significant investment that i don't know if i would have been able to make so now i have that wood for free essentially i guess just go for it if you're really that interested in it you can get the Alaskan mill to kind of start, but it's such a different game. Like, I, I wouldn't, I, if I were to go back, I wouldn't start that way. All I do is I put ads on Facebook, so those are free. That's not an investment. If people reach out, people reach out. Once you have the mill, it's so self-fulfilling. Basically, the market wants the people milling for them. And when you put it out there, it's, your schedule is going to fill up like that. That's the, like, I'm not very good with the business aspect of it. So I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants. You could step it up to be a whole lot bigger than me really quickly, right off the bat. If the market is there, people are definitely interested. Woodworking is a huge business. Tons of people love just working. Weekend woodworkers, just even little things. It's just the whole live edge market is really big. If you are that local guy, there's very few places that you can get live edge slabs. So that's a big untapped market. People aren't going to take their trees to a huge sawmill. That's kind of just not the way it works. So if you have yours on a trailer and you can go to them, there's a big market for that. I guess like it's very, it's a personal thing. Um, but if you can get, if you're kind of debating the 126 or the 130 definitely go you're gonna <laughs> as soon as you start cutting you're gonna want to go bigger kind of with any tool i suppose if you can just get the bigger size the longer trailer i got i only have the 10 foot one right now and i kind of kick myself for not going bigger when i got it a lot of people will call and say oh yeah i have a i think it's under 30 inches and you show up and it's a big 40 inch tree and you're like oh i don't know We'll have to work somewhere around this. I would definitely size up if you can. Yeah, a couple of the accessories. Would, if you don't have machines to move these logs, definitely you have to get the winch and the ramp. Because yeah, I don't know how else I would get around that. Definitely network as much as you can. Talk to these tree companies. These tree guys would love, love to talk to you. Having a personal, close relationship with a local Sawyer is a huge benefit for them. They would love to 
to have you come in, check out their operations, and know you one on one because it's a huge benefit for them if they can get rid of a lot of their logs. Even the really big companies, they'll sell trailer fulls of logs to you for discounted rates if you're buying several of them. And it's just a huge world of trees that all these tree workers know each other in the area. So they will definitely refer you to other people who they know will need your services.